What's up guys, our September Patreon rewards are finally available. If you're interested in picking up a full art brainstorm or Muldrotha the Gravetide, you can check out all the details at patreon.com slash it resolves. What's up guys and welcome to another crack a pack episode. I hope you all are having a fantastic start to your week and hopefully day off depending on where you're watching this. But uh, today I'm very excited because we're opening a pack of Cold Snap. Uh, Cold Snap being a really, really interesting set. Lots of awesome stuff from this one. Uh, hopefully we get some cool stuff out of this one. I know the last pack we had, uh, we actually pulled something like a counterbalance or something like that, which is just sweet. Absolutely sweet. So uh, hopefully we get some cool stuff in this one as well. Uh, we're going to do our best uh, to do this as if it is a draft scenario. Uh, I'll go ahead and say I didn't draft during this set, so I don't necessarily know what the best cards are. Uh, but I do know some of the mechanics like snow creatures, snow lands, things like that. Uh, and so we'll we'll do the best we can. Hopefully we'll be able to come up with something. So our first card here is Boreal Griffin. It is a 3-2 for 3 and 2 white. It has flying. And if you, if you tap a snow land, it gains first strike until the end of the turn, which first strike in limited in particular, very, very good. Absolutely fantastic mechanics. So uh, I actually don't mind this card. I feel like it's a little pricey, and I hate that you have to pay extra to give it first strike because it already costs 5 mana. But it is a 3-2 flyer with conditional first strike, and I have to consider that as just like a solid evasive threat. Um, I think it's perfectly fine. I, I also like that it is a snow creature. Uh, that just means that there's synergies and things like that there that might not otherwise be there. So I actually do like this card as a common. I think it's fine. Uh, I'm probably not first picking it, but I don't think it's a bad start by any means. Uh, Ronom Serpent. Uh, is a 5-6 for 5 and a blue. It can attack unless a defending player controls a snow land. Uh, and when you control no snow lands, you have to sacrifice it. So, interesting here. Uh, there's conditional stuff on this that I really don't like. I don't mind, actually, the fact that if you have no snow lands, you have to sacrifice it. I think it's pretty safe to assume that you'll probably have the snow lands you need to keep around and things like that. I have to assume land destruction isn't that uh, popular uh, in a limited environment. Uh, and so I don't think that's much of a problem, but the fact that it can't attack unless the defending player controls a snow land, I do find a problem. Uh, I just think, you know, while most decks and most uh, in, in this time, in this limited environment, will probably run a couple snow lands or a couple uh, just snow permanents in general, I suppose, but in this case, lands, uh, I have to imagine it might run into the situation of just not being able to attack. And that's pretty bad. I mean, it can still defend, but it's a 5-6 for six, six. Like, it's kind of just an on-curve thing that might work and might not. And I don't really like that. So I'm going to pass on this. I don't think it's quite as good. Uh, Boreal Druid is a 1-1 one, one for 1 green. You can tap it to add 1 mana, uh, generic mana, to your mana pool. Now, this I actually really, really like. Uh, ramp in general is always great. Turn 1 mana dorks in particular, fantastic. That's exactly what you want. Uh, I don't like that it doesn't fix you for any color. That's a bit of a downside, but it does still ramp you, and that's huge. That's really, really powerful. Uh, really, in any format, that's a great thing to be able to do. So I actually don't mind this. It's not as much of a threat, obviously, as the Griffin, uh, without a doubt, obviously. Uh, but it does maybe help you get to these threats faster. So I'm actually going to keep them in the same pile for now. Uh, Rhymebound Dead is a 1-1 one, one for 1 black. Uh, you can pay a snow mana and regenerate it. So it's a very classic kind of regeneration skeleton. Uh, and I think it's probably fine. It's probably a great blocker, but it is a, at its heart just a 1-1 one, one for 1. Not super exciting. It's going to be difficult to deal with, but that's about it. Uh, and so for that reason, not super excited by it. Uh, snow covered plains. So if you don't know, uh, the snow lands are basic lands technically, but uh, you do have to have snow lands to play certain things like we're seeing abilities and things like that where you have to have snow lands. You can't pay that with just an average plains. It has to be a snow plains. Uh, and so for that reason, it's actually really useful to pick these up every once in a while because you may find that you really, really need them. Now, I don't think they're first pickable necessarily, but uh, you will actually have to draft these if you're ever drafting this set uh, as you're going through. You can't just 
throw in some basic snow uh, snow covered planes or something as you need them uh, like you would normal basic land. So just a heads up there. Actually really, really good to pick these up. Uh, this does actually come in clutch with like Modern Horizons a little bit if you guys are ever playing that one. Uh, because snow covered lands are in there, snow permanents are in there. Uh, you do have to draft that uh, those lands during the set. You can't just add them in at the end. So just a heads up there. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Surging flame, uh, an instant for one in a red. It has ripple four. Ripple was a really interesting effect. So when you play this card, you may reveal the top four cards of your deck. Uh, if you're uh, pl if you may play, excuse me, any revealed cards with the same name as this spell without paying their mana cost, and then you put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So it rewards you for having a lot of the same card in your deck, which is interesting. Uh, and then it deals two damage to target creature or player, which is just on point removal. Fantastic for sure. Uh, I actually really like this. I think it's probably better than what we have so far. That might be incorrect. But uh, when in doubt, removal is always a safe pick. You're always going to need it, obviously. Uh, and so if you're not super comfortable with the set like I am with this set, uh, it's definitely safe to pick the removal for sure. Uh, Rite of Flame uh, is a sorcery for one red. You add two red to your mana pool, then add another red to your mana pool for each card named Rite of Flame in your graveyard. Uh, this is much more of a constructed card. We actually see this a little bit in Storm occasionally. Uh, but in general, it's much more of a constructed playable card, not so great in draft. Uh, because while you're relying, uh, first of all, on having a lot of Rite of Flames in your graveyard to make it really worth it, you're also relying on just having a lot of good cards in your hand that you need to play. Uh, and it's very, very difficult to get that in limited. It's much more of something that you can build around. So not super interested in this uh, for limited in particular, but definitely super stoked to open it just because it is a powerful card and, uh, and some mana generation uh, abilities for sure. <coughs> Uh, Grim Harvest uh, is an instant for one in a black return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand, uh, and then you can recover for two in a black. So when a creature is put into your graveyard from play, you may pay two in a black. If you do, return this card uh, from your graveyard to your hand, otherwise remove this card from the game. So pretty interesting here. Uh, it's honestly just good regardless uh, without the recover mechanic. With the recover mechanic, it's actually even better because you have the ability to potentially uh, play it more than once, which is always fantastic. Anything that you can get multiple uses out of, you'll probably want. Uh, and so this isn't a first pickable card, but if you've got some really good bombs and things like that, uh, it's really nice to be able to, especially instant speed, bring those back to your hand, uh, devalue the opponent's removal by being able to play them mul multiple times. Fantastic. I still like Surging Flame better. I just think it's a better uh, spell in general, but this is not bad for the graveyard recursion side of things. Uh, Martyr of Frost is a 1-1 one, one for 1 blue, part of a cycle if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you can pay 2 of any color, reveal X blue cards from your hand, and sacrifice Martyr of Frost. Counter target spell unless this controller pays X. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, X obviously being the number of cards you reveal in case that wasn't clear. Uh, this is like okay. I don't love it. Uh, I'd imagine there are definitely instances where your opponent are gonna, they're going to have to play around it. I mean, that's that's the takeaway. Uh, but it's a known counter spell, so they're going to be able to bait it and things like that. Anytime there's a counter spell that's like on a creature or on the field, it's nice, but it just means the opponent knows about it, and that's not great. Uh, you obviously don't want them to know about it because it's a counter spell. So it's a little bit tricky. They're going to be able to play around it, uh, but it will probably hit something, and in that case, it's good. Uh, but it's also a 1 1, so it's easy to burn, things like that. Not super excited by it. Uh, Kajeldian Kajeldarin, I hope I'm saying that correctly, uh, Warcry uh, is an instant for 1 in a white. Creatures you control get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is 1 plus the number of cards named Kajeldian Warcry in all graveyards. <coughs> Excuse me, guys, I'm a little coughing today. Um, so. These uh, cards are really, really good in a go-wide strategy. We see this kind of thing a lot now. Uh, Inspired Charge comes to mind. Trumpet Blast comes to mind. A lot of these cards are newer, but they do roughly the same thing where they buff your entire team, uh, and then you're able to swing in for a lot of damage. Obviously, this is rewarding a lot uh, more of these uh, same kind of effects in the same deck, uh, which is probably good. You want to start maybe taking them a bit earlier than you normally would. 
but I still want to be a little bit more solidified into that go wide strategy before taking a card like this. A lot of times they're nice, but uh, you don't actually get your full value out of it if you're not already in that strategy where you're buffing a lot of creatures at once. Uh, really, you want to be winning the game off of a card like that. So not my favorite thing, uh, but not bad if you are in that uh, are, are already solidified in that go wide strategy. Uh, Frostweb Spider is a 1-3 for 2 and a green. It can block as though it had flying. And uh, when it blocks a creature with flying, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on the spider at the end of combat. So this is actually a really cool defensive card. Um, generally speaking, though, I like to be a bit more aggressive, I will go ahead and say. Uh, and so while I like this card, definitely, uh, first picking, I'm looking to be a bit more aggressive, a bit more uh, powerful versus something that's a little bit more defensive. However... Uh, if I am in green, uh, I think this is a very, very solid 3-drop. Uh, being able to not only block creatures with flying, but potentially buff this card up a good bit to become a threat of its own long term, absolutely perfect. That's exactly what you want to be doing. Grind out the opponent a little bit, and then be able to go over the top with something like this. Perfectly on point. Still definitely like Surging Flame better, but very, very powerful. <coughs> uh, okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, cry cryoclasm uh, is a sorcery for two and a red destroy target planes or island and it deals three damage to that lands controller this is a very classic example of a big big hate card uh, we see hate cards a lot uh, and especially the older sets and we're actually starting to see them a little bit more uh, in this latest course that we've seen a few uh, where they're really, really picking on like one or two colors, in this case, obviously, uh, white or blue. And it's actually really nice to have these as a sideboard option, but it's not good to take these first because they're not going to be main deckable cards. You just might not be up against a card or a deck, excuse me, that runs planes or islands. And in which case, this is a completely dead card. So definitely not a bad sideboard option, but keep that in mind. You're not going to want to pick it first by any means. Uh, Steam Spitter is a 1-5 for 4 and a green. It can block as though it had flying, and then you, it basically has fire, the, fire breathing, excuse me. So uh, you can pay a red and it gets plus 1, plus 0 until the end of the turn. Um, <clears throat> I don't love this, if I'm honest. It's probably a playable, perfectly fine card uh, to block. Again, only really block the creatures with flying because it should be able to survive it, but... I don't like that you're having to sink a lot of mana into it. Um, it's nice because on, a, on the offense... <clears throat> you can actually swing in for quite a lot of damage if you leave up a lot of red. Uh, but you do have to leave up that mana. And that's obviously the downside. It means you're not going to be playing a lot of spells. You're going to be waiting and seeing if this can do the damage on its own. I don't love that position, uh, but that doesn't mean this is a bad card. It just means it's, it's one of those things you kind of have to weigh depending on the deck that you're already in, what other cards you've already got. That might be a consideration for you. Uh, but I still like Surging Flame better. Uh, again, solid, solid removal. Uh, just really, really important for sure. Uh, Blizzard Spectre is a 2-3 for 2, a blue and a black. It has flying, and when it deals combat do damage to a player, choose one. That player returns a permanent he or she controls to its owner's hand, or that player discards a card. Now, this is a card that I think will beat out Surging Flame in my mind. So, uh, it's aggressive. Obviously, it's encouraging you to deal damage to the opponent. And if you do, you can really, really set them back uh, in terms of either resources or tempo by bouncing one of their permanents. And it's worth noting, <clears throat> it's any permanent, not just a creature. Uh, that's really, really important because a lot of times you can bounce maybe a land and set them back that way uh, or an artifact that they had just played that they're now going to have to replay. All of those things are really, really important. Blizzard Spectre, really, really solid uh, four drop in my opinion. And then our rare, oh, cool. So Allosaurus Rider. Uh, this card actually got really, really good uh, because of the core set, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, it's five and two green for an elf warrior with one plus star power and toughness. Uh, you can remove two green cards in your hand from the game rather than play Allosaurus Rider's mana cost. Uh, and then the Allosaurus Rider's power and toughness are equal to one plus the number of lands you control. Uh, so really interesting. Uh, definitely a huge bomb. <clears throat> it's kind of just a big fatty. Like, it's cool because you can uh, remove two cards from your hand, two green cards in particular, so you can actually get this out pretty early if you need to, and then it's just like a huge swinging bomb. Like, that's pretty good. 
Uh, honestly, that might be the pick over the Blizzard Spectre. I think I'm going to have to go with the Allosaurus Rider uh, solely because it's just that it's a powerful card. It's a very powerful card. Uh, now, you are down two green cards if you play it super early. That's kind of bad uh, because they are removed from, from the game. Uh, and so I guess you could weigh your options there. It might be better to take the Blizzard Spectre, but Allosaurus Rider, very, very sweet opening. Uh, really, really enjoy Cold Snap, guys. I always seem to find some kind of value in it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.